This is a review of the Road Pro portable frying pan and saucepan. The reason I'm doing these both in the same review is they're, they're very similar items. They're both priced in the low 20s at Amazon.com. You can buy these at truck stops and sometimes RV type places in the uh, mid to high 20s. So, you know, a little cheaper online, the convenience factor has them for, you know, maybe 30 bucks each at some of the rip-off truck stops or RV places. And um, looking at these things, you can obviously, if we can figure it out compared to the size of my hand, okay, they're not very big. The reason they're undersized for that is these are originally kind of more for the trucker and RV crowd where it's, it's only one or two people that's going to be using this or somebody who's alone in an in RV or van living or something like that where they really want their appliances to be compact compact and lightweight so these things are very very lightweight not necessarily backpackable but definitely you know something that's not going to heavily encumber a vehicle to uh, even have a full kitchen kit in a box which is I think what I'm going to build as far as a uh, a 12 volt kitchen kit goes what I had been hoping was some of this stuff would be large enough or usable in some sort of an off-grid food cart uh, trailer setup that would run on 12 volt appliances. That's definitely not the case. I would not consider these things to be heavy duty enough to use all day every day. But when you're talking about them being relatively low cost compared to decent quality kitchen stuff, it's it's a question of you know how frequently do you want to use this stuff when it burn uh, how frequently do you want to replace it when it burns out uh, I've had okay luck with a coffee maker so far I had kind of mixed luck with one of their ovens uh, but there's uh, I, I understand it using trays with them the aluminum trays helps with the little frying pan and the saucepan a lot of this these, these have actually the same cooking element in them it's just a question of what the shape of the pan is really and they're they're priced within a couple bucks of each other and what I notice when I I check prices at different retailers sometimes one is more money sometimes the other one's more money I think for whatever reason the frying pan was more money than the saucepan on on this uh, from Amazon from other places that sell them it's anybody's guess which one is more than the other the saucepan, if you're reconstituting and cooking a lot of the Augustan Farms freeze-dried type stuff, I think it's going to be a little bit more useful, uh, a little bit more useful of the two. The other thing is it's, it's a little bit bigger. Um, I think as far as the capacity goes on this, you're looking at, I don't know, you know maybe, a, maybe a, a one liter or something like that. With a frying pan, it's it's really got very little capacity, right? I mean, you're looking at about what six, seven inches. It's it's not really big, and so when we look at you know how much you're going to be able to cook in that thing, you're looking at a couple eggs or maybe a little slice of Canadian bacon or something like that. It's it's just not a lot of capacity. It's it's also just straight aluminum on these things. It's not like you've got a non-stick Teflon surface. Um, some people prefer it that way. I guess it's just you know your choice. The, the other thing you got to look out for is you're a little bit limited on how to wash these. You don't want to submerge them in uh, in wash, and that that also means that a lot of times the realistic way this gets washed is they get they get wiped out with a towel. I mean that, that's kind of how they expect you to wash it, and I think it's one of the reasons they consider these things to be semi disposable in some areas where. You know, a trucker might buy these things, use them on one big trip, and then when it's a little nasty inside and understanding that because there's an electrical component, it can't be stuck in a dishwasher, they just kind of throw it away or give it away. If you are equipping an a emergency shelter or off-grid living situation, you might want to consider backup plan. Yeah, realize these things are probably... You know, you're going to run into some issues of maybe not being able to wash them the way you would want to. It's a really tricky process, uh, but they can be cleaned. I mean, they, they can be made to last, but you're going to want to have backup stuff around. The heating element is a, uh, it's the same for both of them. It's basically a 13 amp, 156 watt. Which means that if you have like one of those little multiple outlet uh, type 12 volt outlets, you you can only run one of these at a time 
and realistically on a 20 amp fuse in a uh, electrical type thing in a vehicle you would have to have a, a separate fused connection for each one of these that you use so if you're setting up a little off-grid kitchen you're going to probably need a separately fused connection for every item that you're cooking with and that's that's if you're doing it straight off your electricity straight off your solar you're going to need a separate electrical connection and you that that means you can't cook things simultaneously if you are let's say you're running all of your power outlets off of, of one plug so using this stuff on a regular basis will probably mean that you need to install additional 12 volt outlets on their own circuits uh, as far as the saucepan is concerned it's it doesn't quite have a flat bottom I think probably by not having all that much of a corner arrangement down in there it's probably a little bit easier to clean but um, that that would remain to be seen it's a matter of opinion I but I think if you're only going to get one of the two I would go ahead and get the saucepan not the frying pan I mean in, in a pinch you could kind of sort of fry stuff in the saucepan you just got to realize you're gonna have trouble reaching it with a utensil um, the frying pan because there's a little more surface area going on can maybe get its stuff a little more but not by much so they are you know I'd like to say these are the best or the worst as far as 12 volt appliances or cooking stuff goes the reality is they're about the only game in town there really isn't much out there so I'm probably not going to do much of a cooking demonstration on these as part of the video I'm just going to upload it as is but this is where you can see right now uh, again compared to my hand these aren't very big what's on the market in 2013 2014 as far as 12 volt cooking appliances go and what i think is a lot of room in the market for something larger something that's going to work with people who are actually living off grid want to use things that are electric and not have to put everything through an inverter